This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball, and the weekend series continues on Fox Sports Midwest from Chicago. This afternoon, game number two, as the Cubs play host to the St. Louis Cardinals. A.J. Pierzynski, most of his career spent on the other side of town with the White Sox, a 17-year career in the big leagues. He's been signed by St. Louis. He's in the lineup today. I talked to Mike yesterday. Uh, we just talked. I said, whatever you need me to do, if you need me to catch, you know, once a week, seven days a week, whatever you need me to do, you need me to come off the bench, you need me to play the outfield, you need me to pitch, whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. Just uh, let me know. And, and uh, he was very um, forthcoming about it, and we talked, and um, that was it. It was all I needed to hear. So A.J. Brzezinski is in the starting lineup. That's Al Roboski. My name is Dan McLaughlin. Welcome to Cardinals baseball. And, Al, how about the role that A.J. could play with his team in the final two months? Well, I think this team needs a little attitude change, and he will provide that. He also, with he's in the lineup today against Jake Arrieta, he's four for five against him with two home runs. Hopefully we'll get a return right away. All right, A.J. Brzezinski in the lineup. Shelby Miller is on the mound for St. Louis. As Al mentioned, Jake Arrieta going for the Cubs in our first pitch comes your way next. City, A.J. Perzinski, number of seasons on the south side, now playing here on the north side with the St. Louis Cardinals as we get set for the stretch run of this 2014 campaign. Yadier Molina is out, Perzinski is in. George Kataris no longer with the club. A look at Mike Matheny's lineup today. Matt Carpenter has been red hot. He'll lead it off, followed by Colton Wong, then Matt Holliday, who homered here yesterday. Matt Adams, Johnny Peralta, the numbers against the Chicago Cubs for A.J. Pierzynski, Oscar Tavares in the lineup, John Jay, and the pitcher Shelby Miller. Born in Farmington, Missouri, that is Jake Arrieta, and he has found a home here with the Cubs. Well, he's been outstanding. He came over from Baltimore, 
last year. He started the season on the disabled list, and he made his first start this year against the Cardinals, and he's pitched very well against St. Louis. 1 0 with a 0 0.55 ERA, just one earned run in 16 plus innings with 19 strikeouts. He really has a good fastball. He throws that up in the zone a lot, but it's his slider, his cutter, whatever you want to call it, that really has been the difference maker for him and why he's a big winner right now. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light Live, the perfect beer for. Whatever happens, come in and visit Mid American Chevy dealers and make your move to Chevrolet today. And by Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Chris Coglin, the former rookie of the year, Manning left field for Rick Renteria's club as we look at the Cubs defensively. Alcantara, who played second yesterday, is in center. Ryan Sweeney had a big afternoon in game one. He's in right field. Luis Valbuena, he's at third. Starlin Castro at short. Emilio Bonifacio at second. Anthony Rizzo, the first baseman. Wellington Castillo behind the plate. The Cubs defense around the horn is brought to you by Dobbs. Wearing number 35 is A.J. Pierzynski. The last player to wear that number was Kelly Stinnett. Cardinals had him for a brief time. I think of Matt Morris when I see number 35. Yeah, and then uh, you know, just just different. I think just having a new player makes a little difference. And then a guy with a, a little attitude, but also a 282 career hitter. And a ball to Matt Carpenter, and we're underway. Carpenter is homered in two of the last three games. Picked up his fourth career leadoff home run on Tuesday night and looks at a ball, two balls and no strikes. The Cardinals and the Chicago Cubs have loaded up their lineups with left handed hitters and really no discernible difference between righties and lefties. Arietta, the average against him, whether you're right handed or left handed, has been around 200. 3 0. See the patch on the front of the jersey of Jake Arietta near the Cubs logo. That's 75, and that's a Hall of Fame logo. And the Cubs and the Cardinals, the only teams in Major League Baseball wearing that today, because tomorrow will be a throwback day. See the throwback uniform, so they wear that. And both St. Louis and Chicago, with their teams well represented this weekend in Cooperstown. That patch doesn't get some of these guys off balance. A big C for the Chicago, and then now you got the little 75. Probably help them with their balance, but uh, gotta find an excuse for something. Well, buyers are wearing it as well. And a 3 2. Taken low and a leadoff walk. Mark Wegner is calling the balls and strikes today. Mike Winters, the crew chief, is at first. Andy Fletcher is at second. And Mike Malinsky. He's down at third. Here's Colton Wong, did not start yesterday. Let's see if the Cardinals can't break out on top like they did yesterday and then hold on to the lead. They got the gift, three unearned runs, in the first inning. Pulled along with five home runs since he's come off the DL. Right now, Arietta really struggling. Find the strike zone. Cubs also wearing patches on their hats, the side of the hat, and on the sleeve in the 100 year anniversary of Wrigley Field. Despite the loss yesterday, Cardinals are tied with Pittsburgh, second place in the NL Central, three games back of Milwaukee, three games in front of fourth place Cincinnati. Marietta was originally selected by the Orioles in the fifth round of the 2007 draft out of 
Texas Christian University. And they really say that slider or that cutter has really made the difference this year. And how about his ERA? 2.12 coming in. Two and one the count on what is a muggy afternoon here in Chicago. It's 81 degrees, but it is muggy. The packed house, they had the largest crowd of the season, over 41,000 here yesterday. The Cardinals in town. The Cardinals are very well represented in the stands. Short lead at first by Carpenter. Here's a 2 1. 3 and 1. One thing that they, the Cubs, they've been overusing their bullpen quite a bit lately. And they can ill afford to have Marietta struggle with his command. Base hit out to left off the bat of Colton Long, and the first two have reached. Now I think the same thing to an extent could be said about the St. Louis Cardinals and their bullpen especially when you take away the starts by Lynn and Wainwright. Yeah I, th I think you're absolutely right and with the other three starters as we Hyundai will show you this delivery and the first base hit and four plate appearances off the bat of Colton Wong going the other way really as a pitcher if you've got a guy that's a pull hitter. And he's easy to pitch to, but when you got guys that go the opposite way, spray the ball around, you can't stay in one location. Breaking ball drops in for a strike on Holiday. He's hitting 269. Leads the club in RBIs with 52. He had three hits yesterday, and one of those was a home run, his ninth of the season. And Dan, back to your point about the starting pitchers, other than Lance Lynn and, and Wayne Wright. I think these are very important starts for Shelby Miller. You know, what do you do with Martinez? Currently, he's in the bullpen again. But it really, with the even with the offensive problems the Cardinals have had, you know, the inconsistency all season, I think it really says that the Cardinals need to go out and get one starter for sure, but maybe two. There's some talk about Jake Peavy. And he was picked up today, traded away by the Boston Red Sox. Ground ball right side, backhanded by Rizzo. Runners advance to second and third. Little cue shot. And Rizzo makes the play. So Jake Peavy goes to San Francisco. And they also picked up Dan Ugla, too, did the Giants. Got ugly when he was released by Atlanta with a healthy contract still in his pocket. But and, and I, I saw that uh, transaction for PB and it looked like a very, very stiff price. So that's one of the other things that kind of handicaps uh, John Mozella is the asking price for whenever you're trying to acquire one of these starting pitchers. In the dirt and blocked by the catcher, Wellington Castillo. Matt Adams hitting 319. He is four for five against this right hander. Cardinals have three men in their lineup Adams, Peralta, and Krasinski that have hit Jake Arietta very well. Sixteen pitches and ten have been balls. Times you can get to a, a starting pitcher early in the game before they find their command. And you know, really struggling. With the numbers that Adams has against this right-hander, you ask him to be patient, but I'm sure turn him loose one swing of the bat, it could be three-nothing. I think in today's game you rarely will give take sides, but you just ask a hitter to be disciplined. 
good cut. And that's what you ask him to do. Now, if you get a pitch that you think you can drive, you have the green light to, to swing. You, sometimes you may even take a, a strike because it wasn't the location you were looking for. And I think every hitter loves to hit with a 3 1 cut. Johnny Peralta batted second yesterday. He's in the five spot in this lineup this afternoon. 3 1 pitch. Full count. The way they kind of bunch them in the outfield a little bit, and maybe even shade to hit to the opposite field. Gap down the right field line and also in right center. The 3 2 stays alive. And we saw that in game one, and it's very tough to shift now against Adams. He's been so proficient in going the other way. And when Talked about Matt Adams early in the season when everyone was putting the shifts on him. You know, he sat there and he didn't quite understand it because he said throughout the minor leagues, I hit the ball where it's pitched. I mean, if that ball is outside, he's trying to take it to the opposite field. And theoretically, that would beat the shift. He's second in the league in hitting at 319. And time is called. So eight in slugging percentage at 515. It was just a week ago off of Zach Greinke. The Cardinals put up a four spot in the first inning last Saturday. It was highlighted by the two run homer by Adams. Here's a 3-2. Adams rips it to Rizzo past him down into the corner. Two runs will score. Adams digging for second and a two run first inning lead for St. Louis. Ball was absolutely scorched and then it took a bad hop right over the shoulder of Rizzo. And it scored a double and two RBIs. And that's what the Cardinals need to do. Look at right in the middle of the plate. He just turns on it, hits it very hard, and then it takes that high hop over the glove of Rizzo at first base down into the right field corner, and the Cardinals pick up two big runs. RBI is 44 and 45 for the big man. Peralta hitting 256. 14 home runs, third among Major League shortstops. He's driven in 44. Knee buckling breaking ball for strike one. Johnny saw Peralta when, or excuse me, saw Arietto in the American League, and he's 5 for 10 against him. Oh, and two. You're right, Al. That took a nasty hop, it looked like, on Rizzo, and it was hit hard. He's glad his head got out of the way of that ball. I'd say so. 0 oh 2 the count. There's some in this lineup that have good numbers against this right hander. Peralta, one of them. Arietta off his glove to second and out. Good base running there at all by Matt Adams. Get back there. And, and by going in standing straight up, he made it easy for him to tag him. He slides. Good chance he's yeah. safe. Boy, a really nice uh, homecoming for A.J. Perzinski. <laughs> You say he's kind of has a polarizing uh, oh, yeah. personality. Oh yeah. But I think right now I think you and I are both in agreement that maybe this is what the Cardinals need—a little kickstart in that. 
Change the personality of the club a little bit. Against Arietta, four for five, and those four hits, two have been home runs. I had a really interesting conversation with AJ today about those numbers. Arietta pitched against Boston earlier this year. AJ wasn't in the lineup. And he kind of felt at times that John Farrell not putting him in lineup against pitchers that he had great success against was kind of question did he want me to succeed or fail? Interesting. He's 37 years old. He's been a part of a World Series championship. One ball and two strikes. By the way, how quickly I forget. Jake Westbrook or number 35. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's on me, Jake. Yeah. One and two the count, short lead at first. Outfield shading him a bit to pull. One two is hit towards second. Bonifacio makes the play. Matt Adams with two RBIs. He's now up to 45 and a two run lead for St. Louis. Rebuilding phase as they wait for some of their young stars to get to the big league level. Here's a look at his lineup. Emilio Bonifacio, a switch hitter. Alcantara, same thing, switch hitter. Anthony Rizzo, Starlin Castro, Luis Valbuena. Chris Cogman, Wellington Castillo was two for four last night. And then you have Ryan Sweeney and Jake Arrieta. They will face right-hander Shelby Miller. So our Kia starter is right-hander Shelby Miller making his 20th start. He's really struggled of late his last five starts. The team is 0 and 5. Shelby is 0 and 3. ERA over 7. And part of the problem is is just not having fastball command. Has had back issues, and as the game would progress, that may have cut down the innings. But uh, hasn't started since July 10. Bonifacio was dealing with the right oblique injury and came off the disabled list prior to Tuesday night's game. That was against San Diego. He's played in 66 games this year, if you include today. One ball and one strike. What a great start Bonifacio got off to the season. Average now down to 265, but he came out of the out of the gate on fire.
Mike Matheny telling us that when Shelby Miller went to the bullpen, it was not as a punishment. The Cardinals are trying to keep him as fresh, as rested as they can down the stretch. On a hop to second base, Colton Wong, one away. Matt Holiday, John Jay, and Oscar Tavares in the outfield. Around the horn is brought to you by Dobbs. Carpenter and Peralta on the left side of the infield. Wong and Adams on the right side, and A.J. Brzezinski behind the plate. A.J. is 12th all-time for innings caught. Matter of fact, he's the only active player with more innings behind the plate than Yadier Molina. And to put it in perspective, he's 300 innings ahead of Johnny Bench, who's in the Hall of Fame, 300 shy of the Cardinals' great catcher, Teddy Simmons. Long, around a long time. Remember the 2005 world champion Chicago White Sox. And he's been able to stay around because of his bat. Now he's got to be a little rusty as he was released by Boston 10 days ago. The Cardinals, when they made the deal for him, there were other teams, by the way, interested, but they felt they needed to pull the trigger on it. AJ was at the Hall of Fame yesterday. This time yesterday, he was in Cooperstown as a friend and former teammate of Frank Thomas with the White Sox. He was invited to Cooperstown by Frank and then had to take a two hour cab to get to Albany and then fly from Albany to Chicago and then in the starting lineup today. The 2 2 out of play. He was ejected uh, earlier this year, and a great quote from A.J. Brzezinski as he asked the umpire for a ball. He said, give me a ball that, well, maybe one you can see. And after that, he was ejected. I don't know why. <laughs> That's a great line. It is. Here's a 2-2. He's trying to help out. Ozzie Gian had him for a number of years with the White Sox, and he said, quote, if you play against him, you hate him. If you play with him, you hate him a little less. And it follows up your point, Al. I think this club could use a little bit of A.J. Brzezinski and his personality. A little fire, a little something different. I'm talking with him, he's very excited to be here. And the independent race, well, that kind of uh, brings out the best in you. Has played in the National League, but not that much. Remember, he was with the Giants. Blew it right by him, and a strikeout for Miller. Alcantara is out number two for a strikeout for Shelby Miller. We turn to Al's Toyota keys to the game. And one thing you're a little bit concerned about is. The Cardinals have a tendency to play down to their competition. Not a slide against the Cubs, but they are rebuilding and they're in last place in the central division. So you have to dominate against them. And for Shelby, it's fastball command. If he's ahead in the count, throwing fastballs for strikes, then they will go after his breaking balls, even if they're out of the strike zone. But if you're pitching behind in the count, then they can pretty much just sit on the fastball. Now he's throwing his fastball 72% of the time. So fastball command is the issue, the key in many ways for Shelby Miller. Two balls and no strikes on Anthony Rizzo, who leads the National League in home runs with 25. Breakout season for Rizzo. All-star this year. One the last uh, fan vote. Uh, Rizzo's hit 19 home runs since May the 8th. And if he 
go back to the All Star game of last season. Since that time, he's close to 40 home runs. In the air, out to right. Tavares makes the catch in a 1 2 3 inning for Shelby Miller. Oscar Tavares leads it off when we come back. Shelby Miller, one, two, three, bottom of the first. Oscar Tavares will lead it off for St. Louis. Let's check in with Jim Hayes and Jim. The reputation, and again, it's a reputation that sometimes is earned, sometimes it's not, but the reputation of rough edges with A.J. Pruszynski, maybe with the media, teammates, fans. What did you find out about it? Yeah, I asked him about that, and he said, look, he knows that he comes with a reputation. He knows that there are a lot of stories out there. So it doesn't do any good to try to shoot him down. He says what he's asking from his teammates and he also said Cardinal fans is that they give him a chance and wait and see what he's all about. He says he's excited about being a Cardinal. He's got a lot of family uh, on his grandmother's side back in St. Louis and he's glad to be with the winner. So he feels like it's a great opportunity for him and he says just judge him later because he thinks he'll be fine. One ball, one strike on Oscar Tavares. How about Mike Matheny's thoughts on adding the veteran? You know, Mike said before the game that the Cardinals have, and it kind of speaks to what you guys were talking about, the Cardinals have a lot of personalities that are similar, a lot of guys that go about things the same way. And Matheny said it might not be a bad thing for this ball club to have one guy who goes about it a little bit differently. And John Mazalock said, he feels like the Cardinals are getting a guy who's a middle of the order guy who's a proven commodity you know obviously not in his prime right now and a guy who can split time with Tony Cruz where the Cardinals can get maybe a little a little jump offensively from him. Tavares grounds out right side it brings in John Jay how about his travel Jim I mentioned the, the cab ride but it was a really long day for him yesterday wasn't it. Yeah he said that uh, actually when he was leaving Cooperstown some of the folks associated with the White Sox were starting to arrive and they saw him going and they're like where are you off to and he's like can't really say but he had a long long cab ride to Albany and then jumped on a flight and got here but you can see he went around the clubhouse he's introducing himself he's a uh, Shaking hands, the happiest guy about having him is Randy Choate because Randy said, "Do you have a bio or something?" And I had one. Checked his age, and Randy was happy to find out he's still the oldest Cardinal. <laughs> and one other thing too, I'm looking at the equipment. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but he's wearing a navy-colored uh, chest protector. And I know fans, you know, you think about the colors that guys wear and the shirts underneath. Whatever the case may be, as Jay hits it slowly to the right side, and it's thrown away. Shuttle pass going around and slipping. <laughs> what a crazy play that was. Bonifacio and winding up at second base. It's John Jay. But uh, quickly, Jim, the equipment and arriving here in 
you know, this, the background with that. Any idea about it? Well, the clubhouse manager for the Cardinals is Rip Rowan, and he said once he heard word that this might be going on, uh, he started reaching out and trying to get all the equipment that uh, A.J. would need. I don't know about the chest protector or any of that, but I know that they have these jerseys made from a company, and that thing arrived uh, about when I arrived at the ballpark at about 11 a.m., so... I, I, he has most of his stuff. That's as far as I know. All right, Jim. Good stuff. I thought the same thing that it might be his own catching gear. Or, but Just looks caught a little, my eye. Yeah, yeah, because it's so different. Right. Maybe. There's Shelby Miller after the air by Bonifacio. Remember the Cubs had two airs in the first inning yesterday. Bonifacio, very versatile player, committing just his fifth air this year. Took an odd hop on him, too. As Miller hits it up the middle, Castro to his left and makes the play. It looked to be a simple play, Al, with Bonifacio coming in, and then all of a sudden that ball took a right turn, and he had to quickly shovel pass it over to first. Yeah, I don't know if he really had to shovel pass it there with John Jay running. It looked like he. Could have done it, but he got it in the palm of the hand and then tried to flip it. You lose a little of the control. You also have a first baseman that's running one direction and he flipped it behind him. So, yesterday's second baseman, after he made it his error in the first inning, left with three runs, he gets punished. He has to play center field today. That's all there is to it. <laughs> and Bonifacio might find himself in center field tomorrow. Right. Kind of interchangeable parts, exactly. those two. So if the Cardinals can't bring in John Jay with two outs, Carpenter's still looking for his first hit off of Arietta. 0 for 7 with three walks. Big day yesterday in game one for Matt Carpenter. No balls, two strikes. Carpenter walked and scored in the first inning here today. Three for five yesterday with a home run. Same as Matt Holliday. Cardinals with a two run lead thanks to Matt Adams' double. Down the right field line that scored Carpenter and Wong. We'll do it again. You've been around teams, Al, that have shed players. You've been around teams that have added players, and in this case, they add AJ Pruszynski with everything that he brings in. It is a little bit of a jolt to a clubhouse, isn't it? I think it is, and one of the things that happens to a club, oftentimes, like what's going through the Cardinals, is just any response they find from from ownership and the general manager bring in somebody, even if it doesn't work, they appreciate. It. They're trying. Yeah, they're trying, and and we know that John Mozeliak is trying a lot more than just. Trying to acquire AJ Pruszynski. I mean, he's looking at every different situation, trying to help this ball club get over the hump. But you don't want a team thinking that you know ownership and management are not doing their part to get them over, to get them to the promised land. Two and two. Cardinals have what many teams want: young talent, talent that's under cost control too. So if they want to get creative and really roll the dice, they're in a better position than many teams. However, that's the immediate future. What you do long term, and that's the risk you run. Good at bat again here by Carpenter. Fell behind, nothing in two. Has worked at two and two. Fouls off that pitch. He's seen nearly 15 pitches already today. Sees more pitches than any hitter in the National League. The mental grind to be able to do that day in and day out is a talent. 
and he is better than anybody doing this. Just bow off pitch. You know, it sounds so simple, but when you stay in that batter's box, and the more pitches you see, the more likelihood you're going to get a mistake. Something you can drive. Hell sitters come up there and you know, they're, they're going to swing at the first couple pitches and usually get themselves out. And the mental toughness not to expand a zone. And all of a sudden you, you look up and you're 0 for 8, 0 for 10, and you feel like you got to make that up, and he you doesn't can. do that. <laughs> right. Strikes out this time. Called third strike. First strikeout for Jake Arietta. Castro, Valbuena, and Coglin. Coming up next inning, we'll visit with the athletic director at the University of Missouri, Mike Alden, be our guest. Football season is here, partner. Oh, I love it. Tigers coming off one of their great seasons in recent memory. Remember, 70s going down to Columbia, seeing half a dozen of their. Their games. Strike to Starlin Castro. Kind of a lightning rod of controversy at times with Castro. It had a down season a year ago. He burst onto the scene, had over 200 hits as a rookie. As he grounds it towards short, taken there by Peralta as he makes the play. Four up and four down for Shelby Miller. I like what I've seen from Shelby Miller. You know, Maybe with Brzezinski too, you're starting to see him use a lot of the off-speed pitches. Notice that too. But you know, we talk about the fastball command. If you're throwing strikes with that, then you can keep hitters off balance because they can't just sit there looking for fastballs. And he does have a very good fastball. It's interesting, Dan, when you said he's throwing 72 percent fastballs. When I got into professional baseball. And the Cardinals farm director was George Silver. And he told me that you have to throw 70% fastballs to maintain your velocity. I took it to a little higher level, but about 100%. Uh, but, you know, 99.9, .9, <laughs> you know, but but we rarely see anybody throw that many fastballs. Uh, sometimes they'll cut the, the cutter a fastball also. We're seeing guys with more array of pitches, more in their repertoire of change up, curveball, slider, cutter, splitter. Now Buena pops it up. Brzezinski looking for help. He may get it here with Carpenter who makes the play. 
that has anything to do with hustle, he can look and he'll find Carpenter. I asked Matt today, I said, tell me about A.J. Brzezinski. And he said, well, we've all heard the stories, and I like what he said. He said, and you can see Brzezinski had no idea where it was. He said, I'm going to judge him on what I see today and from his time here. I don't care what he's done in the past, and that's the way we're all going to approach A.J. Brzezinski. I wish uh, everyone would take that attitude. Not only when you're talking about a new teammate, but just uh, it's a good life lesson. Strike to Chris Coglin, who's hitting 271. Doesn't that kind of sound like the slogan for Missouri? The show me state. There you go. Coglin was down at their AAA affiliate, then came up on May 3rd. He's made 39 starts and left. It's a fly ball out to center. Good start here for Shelby Miller. Six up, six down. Wong, Holiday, Adams coming up in the third. Two night at the ballpark. That'll be August 15th. The Cardinals take on the San Diego Padres. You can buy your Mizzou theme tickets at cardinals.com slash theme. You'll get a limited edition Cardinals Mizzou cap. Your tickets, your cap, and support the Cardinals. It's Mizzou night coming up on August 15th. Third inning rolls in. It'll be Colton Wong, Matt Holiday. And Matt Adams. And we welcome into the conversation Mike Alden, the AD at the University of Missouri. Always good to see you. It's good to see you, Dan. Thanks a lot for having me on today. You bet. I appreciate it. What brought you to Chicago? Well, I'll tell you, Rocky, that's my wife, uh, yeah. Rocky, Jake, our son, and I, uh, every year we try to get a break, you know, out of Columbia and just sure. go some places. And, and we came to Chicago, and this worked out perfect to be able to see the Cardinals play. And, and so, uh, we came up Thursday and, and spent some time with some family and friends and then had a chance to get out to the ballpark today. You know, you get to late July, it's that feeling in the air. It's football season. I'm ready. <laughs> Are you? I'm telling you, I am ready. It seems like just yesterday we were beating Oklahoma State in the Cotton Bowl and yeah. we were celebrating all of that. And then we get into the winter and now all of a sudden football season is getting ready to start again. But I think we're excited about it. I know our fans are and I know Coach Pinkle and our guys are as well, too. It's uh, it's going to be exciting. Our third year in the SEC. Yeah. What, what has that been like, that transition into the SEC? Well, I, it's been great. There's no question. It's been awesome for the university, I think, as a whole. It's been great for the athletic program. I will tell you, though, it is a challenge. There's no question. The Big 12 is a great league that we were in, but the SEC, week in and week out, I mean, you know, Dan, it's a beast you know, yeah. every single week to be able to do it. But it's been so good for our university. It's been so good for 
um, our athletic program and for all of our sports our kids love it you know they love the opportunities and I think the future looks really bright for us in, in the league and nationally as well strikeout of Colton Wong Arietta now with two back to back Mike Alden our guest and uh, you will open up at home correct me if I'm wrong but August 30th South Dakota State you've got four in a row in Columbia correct you know we're going to actually three of the first four in Columbia three of the so first we've got four. South Dakota State we also have Central Florida and Columbia and Indiana and Columbia uh, IU out of Bloomington Indiana but we will we, we, go on the road to Toledo That's we have right. a game that we owe there to Toledo so we've got to go on the road uh, there but those first three or four games will be in Columbia to be exciting uh, all of our new construction It'd be great for our fans to be able to see all the new and improved areas there at Faroe Field Yeah, I was gonna ask you Memorial Stadium. What have you done with the renovations? What's happening there for you fans know, Dan, to head down there? I don't know the last time you were in Columbia, but last year. Okay, so yeah. since that time I mean that East Tower that we have built. I mean it's amazing. It's changed the skyline of Columbia in that area. It's a great looking facility. It really sets off for Rowfield Memorial Stadium in a real special way. It'll be ready uh, to go next month. But uh, it adds uh, some great sight lines, some great premium seats, and I think the look of the entire stadium uh, is really is really pretty special. It's always been a great football stadium for college football, but I think this makes it even better. And we'll be ready to go in the middle of August with that. When you play for an SEC championship and you are the primary game on that night, the country is watching. What does that do, not just for athletics, but in particular, I think, academics and just the, the, the notoriety that the school gets? You know, that day in, in particular, Dan, first of all, the, the, it's invaluable. You can't put a, a figure on how much what great advertising that is for the whole university sure. and really for the state you know if you think about those hours that, that go on and on about the University of Missouri and here we are on television and in that particular day you know we had it uh, I'll let you call this right oh, here. no just a routine fly <laughs> so it's okay. say that. but that particular day was funny because in Columbia on that day we're playing UCLA on, on national TV That's right on, on CBS. CBS CBS and then uh, we have the uh, SEC championship game on CBS. CBS so you had right. basically a seven hour infomercial for the entire University of Missouri and really the state of Missouri so it wasn't just about basketball and football it allowed those sports to be able to really go out and advertise what we're doing at the university and and those the price tag on that it would be immeasurable I mean to think about that you know we've got two quick outs here is Adams I'm excited about uh, Kim Anderson being now the head basketball coach tell me why he was the right fit for you well you know if you look at Kim and the job that he's done not only at, at Central Missouri but before that in the Big 12 and what he's done his entire career um, he's, he's a Mizzou guy there's a fly ball hit down the right field line hooking foul He's a Mizzou guy. He's Mizzou made, and from Sedalia, he's got a, he's got great character, uh, great focus on the game. He's, his recruiting skill sets are, are really outstanding. Is genuine in what he does, and so all of his ingredients and the success that he's had, certainly he's prepared his whole career for this right. opportunity, and and the time is right for him to, to lead the program at Mizzou, and I, I think he's going to do an outstanding job for us as the head basketball coach. Two balls and one strike, Michael Sam. Obviously one of the big stories and now with the Rams and so he stays in the state of Missouri What was that like and what has it done for the University of Missouri? Well again, it, it, it provides that was an international story So right. not a national story but an international story first of all. He's a sharp young man. He's a great guy He, he really loves the University of Missouri. He graduated from the school has done an awesome job and For him to be able to, to show that kind of composure and that type of respect and, and to be who he is on a national stage, an international stage is pretty special for him and the university. You've done a remarkable job, my man. Thanks. Appreciate it, Dan. Thanks for letting me be on with you today. You got it. Mike Alden, the AD at the University of Missouri. 2-0 St. Louis midway through three here at Wrigley Field.
is brought to you by Schnucks, your neighborhood hometown grocer for 75 years. By the St. Louis Science Center, where we specialize in making science fun. And the Cardinals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call the quit line at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Many thanks to Mike Alden for stopping by. The facility upgrades that they've had with the baseball stadium, tennis, football. Should be another great year of college football down in Columbia. August 30th, South Dakota State. As Shelby Miller begins the home half of the third, it'll be Castillo, Sweeney, and Jake Arietta, 7, 8, and 9, as uh, Shelby is yet to allow a base hit. Now, big news today out of uh, Cooperstown. Players who don't get voted in but receive the 5% of the vote will remain on the ballot for 10 years instead of 15. Really? There's a fastball and a strike. There'll be three players that are grandfathered in on that 15-year list. Don Mattingly, Alan Trammell, and Lee Smith. Bert Blylevin was the last player elected after having been on the ballot for more than 10 years. He's voted in in his 14th. I guess that uh, answers the people that say, well, you, you haven't got a hit. You haven't won any more games or saved any more games in the last 15 years. So if you can't be decided in 10. There's a line out to short. That's exactly what they're saying. If you can't figure it out in 10, what's five more years? Torture. <laughs> Torture yeah. to the player. Time now for you to tweet your photo using the hashtag STL fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. By the way, Castillo was two for two before lining out to Peralta off the Shelby Miller. And here is Ryan Sweeney who has hit 467 against the Cardinals this year. Seven for 15, a home run, and he's driven in seven. Nearly half of his RBIs this season have come against the Cardinals. 1 0 pitch. Yesterday, he hit the three run home run to tie the game, and then he got it picked up another RBI later. To have four RBIs in yesterday's contest. That'll get you back in the lineup. 1 1 pitch by Miller. 1 and 2. The other aspect of uh, Shelby Miller that you watch for a lack of control 55 walks in 19 starts coming into play today he had a total of 57 all last season in 30 plus starts yeah, and he's led the ball club in walks and home runs but not today Ryan Sweeney Luis Valbuena two guys that you wouldn't expect hurting the Cardinals. And yet they have hit so well against St. Louis this year. Balbuena 10 for 29 with a couple of home runs. There's a broken bat. Watch out. That went into the seats. And the play is made by Adams. Everybody seems to be okay in the seats. And they are. Now going by the new guidelines, Bruce Souter would not be a Hall of Famer. I mean, think about that. Among others. Many that have had the 10 year plus waiting period but uh, Suter enjoyed time here in Chicago obviously with St. Louis but that's one of the Hall of Famers that you think about. Well but I think I think what the voters would say that if we only had a 10 year barrier we would have voted him in inside 10 years instead of past that 10 years right. I would think so and I wonder about uh, guys now that could be automatic first ballot Hall of Famers would they get a hundred percent which has never happened Derek Jeter Mariano Rivera oh, that to me is ridiculous I agree and and why somebody's going to hold out a vote just saying because nobody's ever done it you know it, what if everybody decided to take that attitude it doesn't make a lot of sense no 
Two balls in, one strike on Jake Arietta. He's hitting 143, no homers and one RBI. And Dan, I guess then you also have the Veterans Committee that would be able to correct somebody that didn't qualify during that 10 year Good period. Point. They could right. still pick them up and vote them in. A Ron Sano, for instance. He was uh, the Veterans Committee selection. Unfortunately, uh, that was all after Santa had passed away. And how, how cool would it have been to see him just oh. <laughs> floating on air? Second strikeout for Shelby Miller. We head to the fourth. It'll be Peralta, Kurzinski, and Tavares. 2 nothing, St. Louis. Former MVP Joe Torre headed to the Hall of Fame. Managed in St. Louis. You gotta have the horses though, and he did not. Borderline as a player. 71 MVP, batting champion that year. 297 career average, nine time All Star, but it's the four World Series titles as manager of the Yankees. That gets Joe into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to Joe and Tony La Russa, the St. Louis ties, and then of course you have the Chicago ties with Greg Maddox, Frank Thomas, Tony La Russa. Nice article on Joe Torrey and how kind of uh, being fired by the the Cardinals opened the, and paved the way for his induction in the Hall of Fame, going to the Yankees. And, I know a little bit about that story. Dal Maxwell, remember, was also he was fired, and Old Jockey took over. But Gene Michaels was general manager of the, of the Yankees, and it had enough of the boss Steinbrenner and everything, and so he said Steinbrenner asked him to put together a committee to re, for him to interview to replace him as general manager, and he called Dal Maxwell up. And said, Maxie, I want you to you know, be on the short list. I want you to interview for the general manager's job, the Yankees. He said, Thanks, but no thanks. But you know who you ought to call? You should call Joe Torrey. He goes, Really? I don't I really don't know Joe. But he wants to be a general manager. He goes, Oh yeah, but wait, hold off a little bit. Let me call Joe first. So Maxie calls Joe Torrey and said, Hey, stick Gene Michael's gonna call you about Interviewing for the general manager job. He goes, I don't want to be general manager. I want to be a field manager. I want to stay manager. Maybe down the road, I'd like to be a general manager. He goes, Don't worry. They ain't going to hire you. Just go ahead and be it'd be good experience to go through the interview process. Goes through the interview process. 
hits it off for George Steinbrenner. He offers him the general manager job, and Joe had to turn it down because he goes, I'm not ready for that yet. Michaels, or then uh, Buck Showalter was his, the Yankee manager. He got into a dispute with Steinbrenner, and Steinbrenner flew off the handle and, and fired him. Shocking. That's when he went to Arizona and started the franchise. So then, so then eventually they get around. They hire Joe Torrey to be the manager. Steinbrenner hears about the, the big multi-million-dollar deal that Showalter is going to sign with Arizona. So he goes, calls up Michaels. He said, "Hey, I'll match the offer. Bring Showalter back." And he said, "Well, you just hired Joe Torrey as a manager. Oh, don't worry. I'll make him the I'll make him the general manager." But Joe Walter declined the offer, and that's Joe became the manager. Third strikeout for Jake Arietta. Next time you're looking to pick up great seats to the game, head to StubHub, and you can earn 2% back in fan rewards on every purchase, including Cardinals tickets, plus with all in pricing. There are no surprise fees at checkout. StubHub, your ticket to upgrades and more. Guess we got a few more. Uh, <laughs> White Sox and Cup fans that came in. A little louder boo this time for AJ. Grounded out to second, first time up. Joe Torrey walked into a great position when you think about the youth that was coming of age with the Yankees. Jeter, Rivera, Posada. Do you know what Bernie I think? Williams. One of his biggest accomplishments was that Joe Torrey and his ability to to work the press kept the press off the backs of the players and it also was an insulation in keeping Steinbrenner away from the players. Brzezinski with a base hit out to left. His first Cardinal hit A.J. Brzezinski. The question Cardinals are asking can he be a difference maker. BJC Healthcare looks at the career accomplishments. The Cardinals catcher today, closing in on 2,000 games. 27 years of age, that 282 average. And he's a, he's a guy that uh, could be a little spark. See the pitch and good piece of hitting down the way and just slices it the opposite way. Here's Tavares. It came off of the swing of Oscar. All right, we've seen him roughly about 100 at bats for Oscar Tavares. What have you thought so far? Well, I think it's real hard to judge him because we haven't seen him in a consistent manner. You know, you look at him right now, he's three for his last six, but he's been coming off the bench. And I think if you got him up here, I'd like to see more of him, and then we can make that evaluation. One ball, one strike. My first impression is that he's a breaking ball hitter. And I've seen a lot of you know, Major League fastballs that he's fouling them off or something. But with more playing time, maybe he'll you know, catch up to that big league fastball. Because there will be more strikes up here. Here's a 1 1 pitch in the dirt. Kept in front by Castillo. I've heard some say they think his swing is a little longer. This is some of the scouts that have been around the yeah. ballpark, but they also, and I've heard a couple of the scouts say it's a byproduct of the way that he finishes. So you, you yes. see the high finish and you think it might be a long swing. Right. And I think that is uh, more of an indication because of that. His follow through and the finish so high, it, it looks like it's much longer. The 2 1. That gets away. Brzezinski on his way to second base with one down. He can hit, and boy, can he run. Seeing a lot of catchers stabbing at the ball like that. Just not a very good effort at all. Putting your pitcher and also your defense under the gun with a kind of a lazy stab. Ruled a wild pitch. 
and those ones that I'm sure Ricky will agree with me not because the ball hits the dirt doesn't mean it's an automatic wild pitch. We disagreed with the ruling yesterday. Yeah. Chance here for Tavares to add to the Cardinal lead. The 3 1. Hit out of play. It's kind of the example what you see the fastball, and a lot of them foul to the opposite side. But it's not a bad thing to be a good breaking ball hitter. Play again. A little cutter that Kaczynski was saying that he had a lot of his success against Arietta before he really found that pitch. But Kaczynski also uh, is now five for seven off of Arietta with two home runs. Tavares with a ground ball to second. He was out in front. Twice he is grounded out to the right side. Krasinski advancing to third. Two down, and it brings in John Jay. Okay, here it is. The age-old question: Do you go after John Jay here, or pitch around him and deal with Shelby Miller, or do you try to get him out and then have your pitcher leading off in the fifth? Well, here we are. You're I know your answer and you know my answer. My answer is I want the first out next inning to be the pitcher. So I'm going right after. And you have to believe that way because you have to think you're better than any eight place hitter. Now if you go after him aggressively or in this case, you know, maybe they start him off off speed pitch, you fall behind 2 0, 3 0, then you maybe put him on. But like to at least go after him. I'm not saying a groover pitch to him. Though. 1 0 pitch to Jay. Ooh. Backhanded stop there by Castillo. I got lucky with that breaking ball or that pitch in the dirt. Now, the reason why just Tavares, the productive out, getting Krasinski over to third base. You see this one bouncing there and this time it bounces right into his glove. Will he see a pitch to hit in this at bat? He did there and chops it to the right side. Foul. The other aspect of this is it's tough to be an eight place hitter knowing that they're probably trying to pitch around you. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is expanding your zone and get yourself out. The two one. Count getting up there for just being in the fourth inning. 78 pitches. Three one pitch. Jay hits a fly ball out to left, slicing a bit. Coglin is over and makes the play. Krasinski stranded. It picks up his first Cardinal hit. We're midway through four. St. Louis on top.
the year, and that'll be next weekend at Bush Stadium. Milwaukee will be in town in a battle for first place, potentially. You don't want to miss it. And Sunday, just for the kids, the Build-A-Bear Workshop Day. 12,000 kids, 15 and under, entering with a ticket, receive their very own limited edition Mini Clydesdale. That's Sunday. Friday is the Beer Stein giveaway. Saturday, the backpack for the kids. Also, Christian Day at the ballpark featuring Marcus Luttrell. Wrigley Field celebrating 100 years of baseball. Dan, by the way, I saw that little Clydesdale. Yes. The build a bear Clydesdale. You will be the biggest and best dad in the world. You <laughs> secure a couple of those. Those things are really, really cute. I'm on it. They're going to go quick. I know some people. They better help me out. Threatening? Absolutely. Yes. In this case, it's a threat. Do or die for Carpenter and safe. Bonifacio beats it out in the first Cubs hit of the afternoon. Uh, now there's the, the silly controversy of uh, the first hit being you know, swinging the bat like a man. But really the reality is, is hey, you can wait anything to get on base. I don't like it, but I respect it that it's trying, the Cubs are trying to win this ball game. And, Bunt for a base hit, the first hit of the game. So Bonifacio, the first hit of Bunt, and it brings in Alcantara. So first time that we've seen Shelby Miller working from the stretch. Sometimes Shelby is so intent to try and keep that runner close, give his catcher a chance, he really hurts himself pitching to the batter. Thought in his last appearance was a relief appearance against the Dodgers, and D. Gordon was on second base, and he was so preoccupied worrying about D. Gordon, a base dealer at second base, that he couldn't throw strikes to the plate. Let's take it high and away. Slide step came in both and Lou Brock did a little study and he said that every pitcher that used the slide step was sub 500. Is that right? Because you, you're doing something a little different. You get you alter your mechanics. You're rushing to the plate. You don't stay on top of the ball. And That's you don't really throw key, strikes. isn't it? Rushing to the plate. Keep the ball up. Best way to combat a team from stealing against you is don't let them get on base. Here's a 2 0 pitch. Runner goes, swung on and missed, throw to second, out of time. Good jump by Bonifacio. And that's his 14th stolen base this year to lead the club. A good throw at all. Pusinski's never been uh, an outstanding throwing catcher. But you're getting him for his offense. You're getting him for his leadership. Two one pitch. Getting into the heart of the lineup after Alcantara, the two that you really look at when you face the Cubs, in Rizzo and Castro. I don't think it's overstating it, but there may not be a more irreplaceable player than Yadier Molina. And you think about what he means to this club on a daily basis, especially the last few years when his offense to an extent is caught up to his defense. He is so valuable 
to lose him for an extended period of time, you, you start to notice it over time, too. It's the unthinkable. Now, we know how valuable he is, and you always feared that if you lost him to even a couple weeks, let alone eight to 12 weeks. And a ground ball that's hit to short. Bonifacio advances to third. those things too Dan that you don't want to dwell on it and then not be able to combat the loss of the brings in Rizzo and the right time to tell you about Fox Sports supports proud to collaborate with stand up to cancer groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate innovative cancer research that gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives now for more information visit Fox Sports supports dot com Anthony Rizzo, a cancer survivor. Hodgkin's lymphoma. I have noticed he has gotten big. He's put on some weight since last year and good weight. You know, he looks stronger. Upper body. Yep. Maybe. Ball is jumping off his bat. Maybe even worked on the legs for a foundation. Runner third and one out. 0 1 pitch to Rizzo. Peralta positioned perfectly. That'll bring in the run. Takes a hit away. RBI number 56 for the Cubs first baseman as Chicago gets on the board. It's now 2 1. Johnny Peralta could not be positioned any better. Peralta has shown good range anyway, but you can see him so far up the middle. Right back with the mound, almost hit the second base bag. Looked like he fielded it completely on the outfield grass directly behind the second base bag and throws him out, but not before they get on the board and Rizzo just leaves their club in just about every offensive category. Strike to Starlin Castro. Cubs have asked him to be aggressive like he was in years past prior to last season. Regime last year talked more about patience, drawing walks. And Billy Miller, the St. Louisan who played at DeSmet High School, played at Missouri State, won a batting championship with the Boston Red Sox and a familiarity with Theo Epstein was brought to Chicago to be the hitting coach. And Billy, one of the really good guys in the game. Said to Castro, forget that. Be aggressive. Use the style that you have developed over the years. You just talk about that story there. Kind of reminds me a little bit about Lou Brock when he was playing for the Chicago Cubs. Young player came up here and everybody had a different idea as to what they wanted him to do. Ground ball to third, and Carpenter a high throw that makes the play. We we'll talk about Lou when we come back. We head to the fifth in a 2-1 game.
Rick makes a valid point about going through the lineup another time and AJ Brzezinski they're talking with Tony Cruz not an easy thing to do I'm sure for AJ you get signed yesterday you make the long trip and then all of a sudden you're trying to learn a pitcher on the go no doubt and that's why it's very important for those lines of communication between Tony Cruz and Brzezinski other pitchers to kind of go out there and Saw AJ warming up. Shelby Miller trying to get a quick read on. Him. Nothing at two. The count on Shelby. Then we'll have the top of the lineup in Carpenter and Wong. Shelby, first time up, rounded out sharply to short. Pitch count at 82 for Jake Arietta. Wondering if he could be one of those pitchers on the move for the Chicago Cubs, and they want to keep him under their control for a few more seasons. He's 28. And the Cubs have talked about the job that Chris Bazio has done. They feel he has been outstanding as their pitching coach. 11 years pitching with the Brewers and the Mariners. Matter of fact, he threw a no hitter for Seattle. It was Dale Swain who brought him to Chicago. He was the manager as Miller strikes out. Four strikeouts for Arietta. August 1st, so Friday night, Cardinals take on the Brewers. Budweiser providing 25,000 fans, ages 21 and older. Fourth Stein in the championship series, highlighting the 50th anniversary of the 64 team. And again, it's uh, loaded with promotions next weekend Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Carpenter has walked and scored back in the first, then struck out with a runner at third to end the top of the second. Off speed pitch drops in for a strike. What makes Arietta tough is the fact that he has four pitches. They're all above average. And when he's on, he can throw all four of them for strikes. Shade Carpenter in the outfield a bit to the opposite way. Big gap in right center. Wrigley Field will have renovations. That's the Budweiser patio that was added in 2012. They hope to have the big scoreboard where the Toyota sign is in left center by next season. They'll renovate some of the bleachers as well. So renovating the clubhouses as Carpenter swings and misses. It's a $500 million project, the renovation here to Wrigley Field. And the folks that are really upset, those that own the rooftops. Looks like they're still trying to work with them, trying to find a solution, but. Looks like at some point they're going to be a legal challenge. Outside to Colton Wong, the Fox Sports Midwest sponsor group. On the rooftops today. Now the Cubs get a percentage of those tickets. And that's a base hit into right center field. Wong, is he thinking too? Takes the hard turn around second, or rather first, to stop. Two out single for Colton Wong. Colton two for three on the afternoon. So they were out there yesterday, the Budweiser patio, and the group that uh, had the sponsors, they're at Beyond the Ivy, which is the rooftops 
Left field. Yep. Right by the pole, the left field foul pole. Here's Holiday, who's over two. Rounded out to first, flight out to right. And there they are. There's Dan Farrell in the yellow shirt, the St. Louis Cardinals, and Jack Donovan, general manager of Fox Sports Midwest, Matt Reardon. Been associated with our station for a number of years. Business, Dan Farrell. There's Jack Donovan with the green shirt and the hat. Matt Reardon there on the right. Good to see them all here. Strike one on Holiday. See how aggressive Colton Wong wants to be with Holiday at the plate. Two outs. Stole a base yesterday, and Colton now at 13 to lead the club. Matt's hit three home runs and seven RBIs since the All Star break. Still wouldn't mind to see him steal, get himself in a scoring position. There he goes. Good pitch to run on, a breaking ball, and Bolt Long with stolen base number 14. No chance for Castillo. 14 out of 16 attempts, and you said he got a breaking ball, so no throw at all. Here, Tim McCarver, right there, yelling at the head first slide. Here's a 1 1 pitch, and Holiday hits it out to right center. But the catch is made by Alcantara. Colt Wong with a stolen base, but left stranded. St. Louis on top. And 2014 players get the retro two button style baseball game you've been missing. Visit RBIGame.com for more details and download today on your console and mobile device. Well, Shelby Miller has given the Cardinals a strong four innings so far. He has allowed in this ball game just one hit, one run, and a key no walks. Struck out two. That really is it, and so uh, continues to throw this way. Pitch ahead of the count. He 
Luis Valbuena. Homered here yesterday and it came off of Kevin Segrist. First home run allowed by Segrist to a left handed batter in the major leagues. That's how rare that is. He just didn't allow many hits, period, a year ago. Valbuena was his first home run against a lefty since June 16th of 2012. Kevin Seekers took the loss yesterday, but good to see him back. Two balls and no strikes. Good to see the three lefties in that bullpen. Showed Seekers and Freeman. Nick Greenwood did a really nice job yes, when he, he was up here. Yes, he did. He I never thought it was with Mears, but he did. The 2 0 has popped up. Brzezinski will give it a look near the screen and out of play. And the question now you know you have Brzezinski in the fold. How much will he play? Or will performance dictate how much he plays? I think that's it. You know, if he just catches fire, I think he'll catch the abundance of the game. Popped up again. Two and two. Nobody's lost confidence in Tony Cruz, but the fact was. Not much offensive support, and when no one else is really hitting, you know, you get uh, you get in that situation where you start out saying, "Hey, just go out there and catch and throw, do the good job." But when they aren't getting any offense from that position, and nobody else is really hitting, you got to try and find offense someplace. Taken by Colton Wong. Oh, he almost threw it away, and Adams makes the play. It should have been a routine. Out number one turns into nearly a bad throwing here on Colton Wong. Heads up play by Adams. And luckily he doesn't, the big man doesn't get hurt. That runner coming down right there and step on a hand or run into him. You could see him think about putting the bare hand down and then thought twice about it. Watch this. I go with my right? Uh, yeah, I don't no. think so. <laughs> I got I'll time. Go with the glove. <laughs> Smart move. Swung on and missed by Coglin. Coglin, one of those National League rookies that you of the year that you kind of say, I missed that. It was with the uh, Florida Marlins at the time. Cardinals still have road trips that will go through Miami and Baltimore. The Cubs have a chance to really play spoiler before it's all said and done. A lot of games left inside the Central Division. Coughlin has flied to center, the 1 1 pitch. So Rick Renteria, remaining games inside the Central. Milwaukee nine with them and then 13 apiece with Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Don't you think that Renteria's rallying cry to his young team is the spoiler rule? They're going to have a lot to say who wins. That's it out of play. And unfortunately, they've played the Cardinals very tough this year. This year, the Cubs are. Cardinals have played 5-5. Five, five. Cardinals are 4 and 2 at St. Louis, 1 and 3 here. When you have success on the mound, it seems like things are going in the right direction for obvious reasons, but it looks like Miller has been a little bit smoother in his delivery here today. Yeah. The like pace has been better too. Yep. Much better pace. Well, that also you know happens when you don't have many base runners. Mm -hmm. Everybody say, well, you slow down when you get base runs. Everybody does. The 2-2. Coglin drives it out to deep right. 
Tavares back in front of the Ivy and makes the play. Good deep job right there by Tavares. FoxSportsMidwest.com, your home for Cardinals coverage all season long. Hall of Fame weekend, Stan McNeil tracks Tony LaRusso's unlikely path to Cooperstown. Read all about it at FoxSportsMidwest.com. Castillo lined out to short first time up. And he looks at a strike. Infield playing him a bit to pull outfield as well. Ushers from Usherettes from Bush Stadium are up here celebrating the girls weekend. Also celebrating Judy Crumpo's birthday. They're all having a good time. Vicky, Amy. Here's the 02. Happy birthday to Julie Crumple. One of the things I've noticed with Miller here today, Al, and maybe you see it more than I, but uh, really staying back on the ball. You know, sometimes he has, at times, not all the time, but you'll see him rush, fall off to his left, which he'll do with just about every pitch, but not as much or as pronounced here today. And a lot of his pitches are staying lower in the zone. So it's almost as if he's staying back in the delivery and then collecting himself and going forward. Well, remember too, he talked about having that rest, give his arm rest, but also a byproduct of that is his back, his lower back had been tightening up on him. And he looks like he's much more fluid and your back tightens up like that, then you're gonna fall off, you're gonna spin off, you're not gonna drive towards home plate. Just hope that uh, you know, this continues because he really has not last five starts hasn't gotten through the sixth inning. But it looks completely different here today. A 2 2. Got him a strikeout held on to by Brzezinski. Third strikeout this afternoon for Shelby Miller as he gets Valbuena, Coughlin, and Castillo with the strikeout. He's allowed just one hit through five. St. Louis leads it 2 1. Shortest outing of the season. We'll get the call tomorrow afternoon. You know he's set to go. It'll be Wainwright and Hendricks will come your way at 12:30. 12:30 with the pregame show on Fox Sports Midwest. Adam, this season has struggled against Chicago. In the lowest ERA since May 3rd, it's Felix Hernandez, then Wainwright, then Kershaw, Arietta in that group, and John Lester. And the Boston Red Sox 
are trying everything they can to re-sign John Lester and extend that deal, but there is also talk that Ben Sherrington will listen to all offers. And so the big lefty that's been with Boston through some of their great times could be pitching for another team before this season is through. It's definitely a seller's market. Strike to Adams. And if you are going to go out and get one of those top nine starters, you can pay a healthy price for it. Strike two on the big first baseman who doubled in two back in the first. He's also grounded out two first. Arietta, a rough start, really was fighting the strike zone, fell behind in a number of accounts. Uh, Early on in this game, and now has settled in. As you see the pitch count is up to 95. Strikeout of Adams. And three pitches to start the sixth. It's a six on the day for the right-hander for Chicago. Movement there, late movement. Pitch right there reminds me of Alex Cobb from the other night. You know, against the left handed hitters, a splitter or changeup that would tail away, and the Cardinals struck out 15 times in that game. 28 strikeouts in the two games against the Rays. Cardinals normally are not a high strikeout total team. Alta grounds it foul. One ball and one strike. Johnny today has grounded out and also struck out. Arietta, Arietta is due up second. At the bottom of this inning. Pitch count will be over 100. Uh, Rick Renteria, what his feelings are about that 100 pitch barrier. Well, we'd like to leave him in the way he's been effective since the first. More and more, you're hearing people talk about stress innings, high leverage situations, more so than pitch counts. Right. And sometimes in a game, you know, you. Be stressed out at uh, 60, 70 pitches. Or other times you breeze through 120. And the idea being, are you dealing with runners in scoring position or not? The 2-2. Two -two. Gets away from him and Johnny gets out of the way. Walter, five for ten, two doubles against Arietta coming in, 0 for two. He's trying to move his hit streak to five games. 3-2 hits sharply to third, backhanded by Valbuena. Long throw and makes the play. And speaking of John Lester, will he be a part of the Boston series coming up at Bush Stadium? The Cubs swept the Red Sox earlier this year. That'll be August 5th, 6th, and 7th. August 5th, 6th, and 7th. Tickets still available. Cardinals and Red Sox at Cardinals.com. Brzezinski is grounded out to second and also single to left. And he singles again, a base hit on the right. Two hit day for E.J. Brzezinski. A.J., how'd you like to catch uh, Adam Wainwright tomorrow? Mm -hmm. 
Breaking ball. Solid contact. Pulls the ball into right field. We say what you will about Brzezinski and what you've heard. There is no doubting he has been a very good player. Very good major league player. Absolutely. You know, still playing at 37 if you're not. 17 major league seasons. Here's Oscar Tavares who is hitless in two at bats. And I think AJ also feels like it's not going to last forever. So, you know, if I have another chance to go into postseason play, I'm going to be the best teammate I can be. But we also say that that little edge about him is maybe what this team really needs. Here's an 0 1. Activity. Like Russell. And Russell starts throwing. Temperatures have uh, cooled off a little bit here at the ballpark. Overcast skies. There is some rain in the forecast as Russell starts to throw. The lefty. Two lefties in their pen along with Russell. It's Wesley Wright. Nothing in two on Tavares. And Sam Freeman starts throwing in the Cardinal pen. If you get down to Miller's spot with three away, if you include Tavares. See a pinch hitter and a chance to add to the lead. It's 2 1 St. Louis. Oscar's about due. I like you thinking. Two and two. The risky run when he's not in the lineup every day, and really for both guys, but I think especially Tavares, is that every bat, I'm sure, for him feels crucial as to whether or not he plays tomorrow. That's a hard way to, to pitch or a hard way to, to hit. And you're always looking over your shoulder. The 2-2. Two -two. Tavares with a fly ball. It is slicing. Long way to go for Coglin. Diving catch and he makes the play. What a catch. Coglin near the Cubs bullpen. Cardinals strand a runner. Brzezinski after his second hit. They've stranded five on the day. Long way to go. Makes the play. 2 1 here in game two. We have the AT&T fan photo of the game. 
Tweet your photos to hashtag STL fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game a broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Shelby Miller has only allowed one base runner in this game. He did come around to score Bonifacio in the fourth inning. And there he is in the sixth. What a play there by Coglin just moments ago. Absolutely. And playing uh, around towards center field, the left fielder in Coglin caught that ball in fair territory, but right, right at the line. Nate Shareholtz has moved to the on deck circle, so he'd be the pinch hitter for Arietta. And then Emilio Bonifacio. Pitch count is at 73. This is when it becomes an intriguing time, I think, for Mike Matheny and what you want to do with Shelby Miller. If he has an efficient inning, pitch count is low. He is due up second. You know you haven't gotten a lot out of him in recent starts. Do you stay with him and try to squeeze one more inning out of him? But if you're the manager, you're thinking ahead. You've got to be thinking of the potential scenarios that are unfolding right now. He's due up second. But I think that the fact that he has not finished a sixth inning in his last five starts is, and his pitch count down, you keep going with him. 2 2 popped up. This is as well as we've seen him all year as Colt Long makes the play. And El Central direct TV standings and the Cardinals every team in the Central with the exception of Chicago lost so the Cardinals this was last night the Cardinals stayed three games back with Pittsburgh and Cincinnati still trying to find a win in the second half they are six back at last check they had a one run lead over Washington this afternoon and Milwaukee leading the division at 58 46. Bottom of seventh in Cincinnati, still with that one nothing lead. Johnny Cueto started that game. He can win his 11th. So Jake Arietta out of the game. The Cubs will go to their pen as Russell continues to throw. Down the right field line. Will it stay fair? It is. This game is tied. Nate Sherholtz comes off the bench and ties the game. 2-2. Two -two. Prior to that home run, one for 14 is a pinch hitter. Just looking at that, Dan, and that is the first pinch hit home run for the Cubs this year. Shelby's allowed two hits and he finds himself in a 2 2 tie. The Nissan drive of the game off the bat of Sheerholtz. Last year he just came, signed him. He'd been with the Giants a couple of their championship years, but had a big year offensively and he's really been down this year, but he wouldn't know it by that swing. Adding under 200. It's his sixth home run and his 32nd RBI. Arietta off the hook. 13th home run that Shelby Miller has allowed this year. Trying to slap at it. Will it drop in? It will. Base hit and it turns into a double. Flying into second base is Bonifacio. My goodness. Just trying to slap it the other way. Popped it up in the air and it turns into a double. I watch Matty Alou do this often in batting practice. Matty Alou would show bunt and then just kind of punch the ball, get it over the infield, and with that great speed, he ends up at second base in scoring position. So quickly, things are caving in on Shelby Miller. Good time to come out and slow him down. Got both Manus and Choke 
who were up and throwing. Last inning, we saw Sam Freeman. I would assume that Chode is getting ready for Rizzo. Rizzo is the man on deck. Alcantara. Today is over two. He struck out and also grounded out to short. Shearholtz, his home run comes on a 1 0 pitch. And just the fourth time in his career he's had a pinch hit home run. Comes at 96 home runs this year. Strike. Cantera is one of many of the young prospects that they're banking on in the future. Made second base yesterday, center field today, and he made. Darwin Barney expendable. Damn, you were talking last inning about stressful innings. And in a sense, Shelby really hasn't been stressed out in this ball game. But yet, when you're in a, a tight game, every pitch you throw can have make a difference. Here's a two-one. You're out of the game. Could be out of the game either way. Either way. And with Rizzo coming up, I'd say he's not going to face. Three-two pitch. Here it comes. Foul back and a good cut. Another big crowd as Wrigley Field is packed in a two-two game here in the bottom of the sixth. Wants to see the starters go deeper into ball games, but yet you don't want to see a guy get beat. Rounded is short, and they run themselves right into an out. Bonifacio trying to be aggressive, and a good play by shortstop Johnny Peralta. He's fast, but he's not that fast. Not a good base running decision there, and here comes Mike Matheny. But first, take a look at it. He's thinking, but memory had to slow up to let that ball instead of running into it, and that uh, allowed also Peralta to make that decision that I could throw him out of third.
Bottom of the sixth. Two outs. The Chevy call to the pin is Randy Choate. 40th appearance. He's done an outstanding job when you ask him to get just a left handed batter out. Ask him to get the big leading home run hitter. That's some experience right here in this battery with Berzinski and Choate. Lefties are four for 49 against Randy Choate. Runner at first, Alcantara. They didn't really break. It's not inside. What we have seen in this series, and teams are doing this with Rizzo, who stands right on the plate. I mean, they are pitching him as inside as you can get on. I mean, he is all over the plate. Good numbers against Randy. You're right. I noticed that earlier. Looks like his arms are hanging over the strike zone. And if they make a mistake and leave it you know, in the inner part, he can turn on it. But it also gives him good plate coverage away, particularly on a left hander's breaking ball. Do the arms look like they're hanging over the plate? Past Eric Kensky, who saw a number of years of big league time and turned out to be a very good pinch hitter. One and two the count. Runner goes and it doesn't matter. Good slider from Randy Choke. Cubs tie it up. Nate Shear holds off the bench with a solo shot. Two two. Build a Bear Workshop Day. 12,000 kids, 15 and under. We'll take that home. Brewers in town next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Big, big series. Take a look at the Subway in game box score for the St. Louis Cardinals, and the damage was done early on. Matt Adams, an RBI double down the right field line. 
That scored two. A.J. Przinski making his Cardinal debut today. Two for three with a pair of singles. James Russell, the lefty, is in for the Chicago Cubs. Chevy Cole to the pen. 42nd appearance. Pretty reliable the last few years. So Jake Arietta today, six innings, five hits, two runs, both were earned as that pitch is taken for a strike by John Jay. He struck out six and 109 pitches. Talking with James just the other day, and he said his dad doesn't miss a game on television. His dad, a former big leaguer, and giving pitching lessons to stay busy, but it's very tough for him to watch on TV because it's awfully nervous when his son is in the games. You might imagine. Base hit for Jay. And that's how we start the seventh inning. John Jay continues to hit left handed pitching. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, never saw any of that coming. Not that I can think of, but that adds to his 404 average, big leading average against left handed pitching. Now 22 for 53. Now Mark Ellis. Ellis pinch hitting for choke at the final out in the bottom of the six, and he was showing bunt. It's one of the little tricks that. Throw over to first base and see if the batter will give it away. The veteran like Mark Ellis sometimes will he will show bunt even if he's going to swing away. He's 0 for 1 against Russell in his career. Bunting and a beauty. Sliding Russell and he made that a lot tougher than it needed to be, but he makes the play. The sacrifice is good. And a chance for Matt Carpenter, who has walked and scored and also struck out twice. You get to the ball quicker by sliding, but then you've got to get up and throw. From his knees, he throws and throws a strike. So Ellis bunting off the bench. John Jay, the go ahead run at second base. James Russell, a former 14th round pick by the Cubs in 2007. Pitched at the University of Texas for Augie Garrido. Check swing. Did not go. Ball one. There is four for 14 off of Russell. A double and a home run in those. Four hits. Two and zero. Oh. Colton Wong on deck, and then Matt Holiday. So with that, a right-hander getting up and throwing for the Chicago Cubs. Sam Freeman getting loose for St. Louis. The crowd starting to become a factor as well. Slipper. Looking. Highest average on the road, Carpenter at 318. Some all stars part of that top five. Here's a 2 1 pitch to Carpenter. Runner goes. Throw down the third and safe. And you can see Balbuena pointing to the dugout for Rick Renteria to review it. 
I thought Jay might be going. He had been getting a beat on James Russell, and sure enough, he took off. And immediately they are going to review. Rick Renteria didn't even look back to get to his bench coach to get the thumbs up or thumbs down. He seems to be safe there. Did he come off the bag? Looks like he still got contact with it. Right there, even or if Russell, he's, yeah. Now this might be able to tell if he came off the bag here. Well, he came off, but he got his foot back on ahead of the tag. I don't know if there's enough to reverse that. To be Jay's sixth stolen base of the year. If the call stands, it was a ball on Carpenter, three balls and one strike. How about that with a left handed bat up? John Jay stealing third, a much easier throw for the catcher. Well, you don't have to throw over a body. And that's why a lot of times you're going to do that. You want a right handed hitter up there. And the catcher either has to throw around the hitter or over the top of him. Renteria just took the word of his third baseman. It is the seventh inning, so. And it really. If the call stands, you know, I mean, there's one out, runner at third base. If you can get get the out there, it's a big play. And I don't think there's enough to overturn it. Our crowd today here at Wrigley, 41,927, 41,927. And this today, game two of this series, the largest crowd of the year here at Wrigley Field. This is a what could be a huge call in this game. Absolutely. And we're going to get a decision quickly, it looks like. Okay. That's where we saw it. When it tags in there, but he's on the base. Now he'll come off ever so slightly, but he loses contact with the glove on the leg. Still on it, still on it. The slide down, still contact, and it looks like he might have broke contact, but then he reaches back and gets it before the tag is reapplied. Infield drawn in. Carpenter ahead in the count. Three balls in a strike. Three and two. Runner scored 73% of the time in this spot for Carpenter. You see the average in the big leagues at 51%. Well, even though Carpenter has a leadoff man, does a good job as an RBI man. The 3 2 pitch. Fouled away. The replay time, by the way, was 1 minute 59 seconds. When the call stands, the average time in Major League Baseball this year has been 222. Overall, 150. Time it didn't seem like it was even near two minutes. It was such a big play. Three-two pitch. Carpenter a ground ball to first play at the plate. Rizzo fires to the plate. Oh, what a slide by Jay! And the Cardinals have the lead, three to two. What a tremendous slide by John Jay, and the Cardinals have the lead. Bouncing on contact. Rizzo's throw, it's up the line a little bit. Good call. And there you see good positioning. I didn't like that John Jay came back and touched home plate. He went across home plate, but by coming back, it kind of gives the umpire a little impression that he missed it. But he touches it with his leg. You just couldn't see it. He just wanted to make sure. 37th RBI for Matt Carpenter. Jay 
on Jason credit right there. It was small ball and kind of took things in his own hands with the steal of third and then coming home on the infield ground out. Or excuse me, fielder's choice. One out runner at first. No balls in a strike on Colton Wong. Wong is two for three with a run scored. Both hits have been singles, and he's also stolen a base. Mark Ellis bunt a big part of this half inning as well. Here's the 0 1. Now 0 and 2. Series the Cardinals have lost the first game. And then to finish out the series, they're five and one. Runner goes, and Wong pops it up. Out of play. Three seasons. Keep on losing the first game, then they go out and win the series. For a good team like the Cardinals and a bad team like the Cubs, it should be a little more lopsided. One two pitch again, and Wong uh, swinging a miss as he strikes out. Also stay in this game to face Holiday. Holiday hit his ninth home run of the year yesterday. It was his third home run in six games since the All Star break. So two outs and a runner at first. Holiday, a good cut, fouls it back. Rounded out to first, fly to right, lined out to center. Hitless today. One for eight off of Russell. Sutcliffe will see the uh, seventh inning stretch. The Cubs looking ahead to the bottom of the inning will have Castro, Valbuena, and Codlin. Holiday in the hole, one and two. Locked, and Carpenter reads it perfectly. No hesitation. He's at second base, and a base hit could make it four to two. It's a big play. It is. Wild pitch, charge to Russell. 
can be smothered. The 2 2 pitch to Holiday. Here it is. Inside. Rick Renteria trying to get that play with John Jay at third overturned. His success rate is at 46%. Mike Matheny's, by the way, is at 18% in reviews. A 3 2 pitch to Holiday. Here it is. Ooh, just missed on the inside corner. Russell is walking off the mound to the dugout. Inning is extended to Matt Adams. They're sitting so far inside. He threw a strike right to his catcher, but it was a ball. And now with Matt Adams up. And 0 for 1 off of Russell. Got two, two young first basemen, two of the better young first basemen, all the baseball, Adams and Rizzo, in this series. Rizzo leads the National League in home runs at 25, and Adams second in the National League in batting average. Two outs, two on. First pitch to Adams. Fastball and a strike. Matt today, the RBI double that scored two in the first. He's grounded out two first and then struck out swinging back in the sixth. Good cut, nothing in two. We see two back to back fastballs. 88, 89 miles an hour. He's kind of trying to cut it. You're thinking, well, at some point he's going to show the slider. You would think. You would think. One and two the count with two runners on. Freeman available in the Cardinals pen. He had been getting loose, and there it was. Russell threw harder than this. The one two. Good at bat here by Adams. As you see, the better chance you're going to get that mistake. Pitch you can drive. You just kept every pitch away from it. Adams drives it into right center. One run will score. Holiday off to the races. Okendo away with it. The big man is chugging along. He's thinking three. Standing up. And the Cardinals lead it 5 2. Four RBIs for Matt Adams today. And 
Kept on trying to go away, 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 and he left one in the middle of the plate, and Matt Adams knew what to do with it. Four triples now for Adams this year. And Carpenter out of second, he'll come home easily. Holiday will come around all the way from first. Ball was kicked out in the outfield. But Matt chugging along. He's gonna he knew he was gonna score. But would that Matt Adams get the three? Outstanding at bat from Matt Adams. Opens up a 5-2 St. Louis lead. is tied now. Peter Borges for the team lead in triples. Jay at two, Wong at two, and Matt Adams in Peter Borges with four. And a new pitcher is in for Chicago. Ryan Schlitter pitched pretty well for the Cubs until he had a bad inning this earlier this week. Schlitter own day. 261 ERA in 39 games before allowing six runs, four earned on three hits in Thursday night's sixth inning versus San Diego. Pulled foul off the bat of Johnny Peralta. Two and two. Problems explode for these reruns this frame, and all of a sudden the sun starts coming up. Schlitter was a uh, closer in the minor leagues. It's a very good years with the Yankees. Picked up his first ever career win earlier this season against the Cardinals. 
right side and a walk to Johnny Peralta. AJ Brzezinski. Cardinal debut with two hits, one to left, the other to right. He digs in with two outs and two on. A very good debut for AJ. Make it even better. Schlitter from Oak Park, Illinois, just outside Chicago. Local product, and that's foul back. Cut there. Tom Lampkin, the best left handed hitting catcher. Man, oh man, that's 1998. I thought it was Katarus. No home runs for George. That's right. That's a card. Right. One ball, one strike. Nice when you can have a left hand hitting catcher. We'll break it open. Three and one. These two half faced each other one time. Flitter won that battle with a strikeout. Um, behind three and one. And like eight days chances. Three one is a base hit on the right. Three hit day for AJ Perzinski in his Cardinal debut. Drives in Adams and it's six to two. Not only does he get his third hit, but he gets his first RBI. You never know. You bring a veteran, put him in a pennant race. You never know what the fountain of youth follows him. He's hitting the ball hard, too. That's a nice thing to see. This right hander is struggling to find the strike zone. He came in, he walked Peralta, wasn't even close. And then Brzezinski fell behind him, three and one. And here is Oscar Tavares. I'm telling you, Al, he's about due. You with me or not? I'm with you. And I'll, I just want to say he's, forget about the about, let's just make him do. So two on, two outs. Homered in his major league debut. That was against San Francisco back home at Bush Stadium. Today he has grounded out twice and then was robbed by Chris Coglin on a great diving catch in left. Two on, and here's a 1 0 pitch. 2 0. Schlitter is really struggling to find the strike zone. Well, like I said, he was pretty reliable just until last Thursday. Going to 261 ERA in 39 games before allowing six runs and four, four earned runs on three hits Thursday night. The 2-0. Aiming that ball, trying to throw a strike. Yeah, no, these two might have faced each other last year at Triple A. Here's a 2 1. Tavares with a fly ball. Left center. And the catch is made. Big inning for St. Louis. 
Brzezinski, a big day. Three hits in his Cardinal debut. Birds on top, 6-2. It's six to two. Shelby Miller, good outing. Five and two thirds. Doesn't go deep in the game, but much better than what we've seen previous. Adams a big day with four RBIs. Arietta, the starter for the Cubs, six innings, and Emilio Bonifacio is two for three. Sam Freeman into pitch for St. Louis, and what a day it's been for AJ Brzezinski. This time yesterday, he's at Cooperstown. Today, three hits in his Cardinal debut. He did this every day. He'd be going back to Cooperstown. Every day. Sam Freeman in our Chevy call to the pen. Starlin Castro. 0 for 2. Issue for Sam here just recently has been control. Hasn't quite seen the control that uh, he enjoyed early on. When he first got to the big leagues again this year. And what gets a little concerning there, Dan, is the fact that he's earned the right to be pitching in more important situations, high leverage situations, and you don't want him to, to change anything he was doing when he was getting people out. I think what we've seen is that the Cardinals. As he gets back to where he was, may use him starting an inning instead of coming in with runners on. You know, one way to kind of ease him back, get him back to where he was. The interesting thing to me is it sounds like they're trying to make Freeman kind of the, the late inning lefty. Broken bat, and Freeman makes the play. One away. Setup guy, Schultz, you got to come in earlier in a ball game, get uh, you know, get a key left hand out situation left, -hand. and then Segris is kind of the, the long guy. Cardinals, Fox Sports, and State of Missouri teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call the Quit Line one eight hundred Quit Now. Freeman, the third pitcher used by the Cardinals today, began with five and two thirds from Miller. Choate came in with two outs in the sixth and a runner on and got Anthony Rizzo to strike out. Sam Freeman. <laughs> 
hit hard and pulled foul near the Cardinal bullpen. Played by that boy. Good pitch. A strikeout for Freeman. He's got the first two here at the bottom of the seventh. So you have breaking ball there, and you can see how effective it is. Very weak swing at it. He was looking for a fastball yesterday. And we got a first pitch fastball that he hit with a home run there. You see where. If you're heading the count, you can throw him that breaking ball and different hitter. Chris Coughlin is 0 for 2. Now 1 for 3. Extends the inning to Wellington Castillo. If you're wondering, Gerald Perry, the last Cardinals first baseman with four triples. Much to the uh, chagrin of Dave Duncan. It's Gerald Perry and Dave Duncan that got into it. The pregame at the PNC Park. One ball and one strike. Seth Main is throwing. Behind uh, Freeman, you would think that four-run lead and with the lefty on deck, Sweeney, Freeman, fly ball lifted into right, backing up Tavares, and he makes the catch. Scoreless frame by Sam Freeman sends us to the eighth. Sports Midwest, let's go to our studio. Pan Paris and Rick Horton standing by with a Bomberito sports update. Guys.
He is dominant. There's no question about that, Pat. And A.J. Brzezinski has made his Cardinals debut at three hits today. It's Junior Lake. He takes over in left field. He'll be in the ninth position in the lineup. And Parker is the new pitcher for Chicago. So we start play here in the eighth inning. Two key plays in this game, both involving slides by John Jay. One, the stolen base of third last inning. Reviewed. Paul stood to steal, and then his slide at the plate to avoid a tag. That broke a 2 2 tie. Cardinals then tacked on three more. All began last inning with a base hit by Jay against the lefty, Russell. Also reached on an air and is flying out to left. Blake Parker, the Chevy call to the pin. Oh, and two. This day back in 1948, Babe Ruth makes his final appearance in public at the New York premiere of the Babe Ruth story. He pass away three weeks later of throat cancer. And this is where he had the infamous called shot right here at Wrigley Field. 1932 World Series in Game 3. So much history at this ballpark. They got the press box up to 1932 standards. One and two. You don't like our uh, wonderful combinations oh, here at Wrigley? And you don't remember the old uh, press box. It is quite an improvement. From 1914 to 1932 improvement. Check swing and he went. Strike out of Jay. Earlier this year, they had Lou, uh, Lenny Marullo, last living person to play in a World Series for the Cubs. Earlier this year, returned to Wrigley Field throughout the first pitch. So he's played in the 45 series. Right, the 45 uh, Cubs who lost to the Tigers in seven games. Alan Craig. I just wonder if the foot injury has had its toll on Alan Craig from a year ago. And we have not heard a word. We don't nope. hear any excuses, but we really do have to think about that. Is so much drifting, uh, body movement. Everybody pulling for Alan Craig. Not only just a great guy, he's a great ball player. And Last two years documented the best RBI man with his average runners in scoring position, but it's not the same player right now. Fly ball lifted into right. Two away. You think about a foot and the base. You know, so important the lower half to Alan Craig. We've seen a lot of movement. I think when you yeah. look, when you watch him hit, there's a lot of movement. Right, and you know, he's crouched over the kind of like the high back elbow, and you know, he's never failed at this position you know, in the big leagues. Really, and got to find a way to dig it out. But he's been such a good hitter, he won't give up. I think trying to stick with him as much as he can, but you can tell it's just frustrating and eating that way out. Here's Carpenter. 
who scored two runs today. Two runs scored today. Carpenter up to 67. Puts him in the top five in that category in the National League. Won the count. So I was thinking about Alan Craig. He's 30 years of age now. Just turned that earlier this month. 308 lifetime minor league hitter. 306 lifetime major league hitter coming into this action this year. So he's really never dealt with this kind of frustration. Pride expects a lot out of him, and so do his teammates. And just when things are going good. You can't ride too high, and, and you can't ride too low when they're struggling. And you knew he was always level-headed, but you can tell he's just can't figure out what's going on right now. Strike on Carpenter. Midway through eight. Parker strikes out two. Nisha coming on. Forty seventh appearance, point six five ERA. Zinski's got to say, What in the world happened to you? Are you <laughs> the same guy I, I knew or saw last year? <laughs> it's been that type of year for Nishak. Everything has gone right for him. Forty seventh appearance for Pat. 4 0, 0 0.65 ERA. So he's had an outstanding season. So the uh, full run lead, the Cardinals bring in Nishek and a fly ball out to deep left, and it's gone. Opposite way, 
Ryan Sweeney does it again. Third home run. Second in two days against the Cardinals. Set up away. And it's out and away, but gets it up in the air and the ball just takes off. Wind blowing a little bit to left. So Nishak after that screaming to himself as Junior Lake lines it out to left. Holiday over and makes the catch. Yesterday, Manning in the third. This has been a good time to get uh, Carlos Martinez out there. For pressure free. He hadn't pitched since July 20th. Mott hasn't pitched since the 22nd. There's 21 pitches for Pat Nishak yesterday. See Rosenthal. Base it out to left. And if they didn't you know, score, and three hits for Bonifacio. It's three hard hit balls against Nishek. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cardinals. Nobody up and throwing in the Cardinals' pen. They're stirring now, though. Rosenthal had thrown it since the 20th, so you can understand him getting in this game. Alcantara with the runner at first, Bonifacio. Tough to turn two. Have to be a hard hit ball. Long. Nice play. Takes a hit away. Good play by Colt Wong. He's playing up the middle a little bit, so this ball pulled through the hole. Gets over there, slides. Make sure you get the, the one out. Anthony Rizzo will be the hitter. Runner at second base, Rizzo. As an RBI today to give him 56. That was back at the fourth. He is flied out to right. Struck out. And the first pitch is a strike, and he didn't like it. Seeing Nishak being hit like this. Ball out to right. Oscar Tavares comes on and makes the play.
Eagles with a lead right now of six to three. It'll be Wong, Holiday, and Adams here in the top of the night. Second inning of work for Blake Parker. Parker struck out two. He struck out Jay and Carpenter. Back in the eighth. Wong has struck out twice to go along with a pair of hits and a stolen base. So Rosenthal looks to be set to go for the bottom of the ninth. Ball drops in for a strike. Nothing in two. Strike out of Wong. Third tonight for Parker. Three and four batters. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, <Abuse. honey. laughs> Try not to hit the kids. You got three managers going into the Hall of Fame. What if Dusty Baker would have done it here in Chicago? <laughs> what if Lou Pinella? You know, he had some good teams sure. too. Sure. But that team that Dusty had was a handful of outs away in 2003 going to the World Series. A lot of people say that if the Cubs ever win, that this town will throw the biggest party ever. I believe it. And it may not ever <laughs> may not end. For the youngsters that they are building around. Oh, and to the count on Holiday. His former teammate Troy Tulowitzki is on the DL, but it's his t shirt giveaway tonight, Al. Mm -hmm. and apparently, the uh, giveaway, the t shirt, the Rockies misspelled the name. 25,000 t shirts with the wrong name. I think they'll be more valuable. Probably right. Yeah. Mentioned earlier, Jake Peavy is now a San Francisco Giant. And Peavy reunited with Bruce Bochy. Bochy had Peavy for a number of seasons in San Diego. Strike out of Holiday. Who is this guy? Mal uh, Morales goes from Minnesota to Seattle. So that's a deal that had been talked about, but that happened within the last 48 hours. Cardinals get A.J. Brzezinski, the former Minnesota twin. Strange people up there. Miscast. Going to the All Star game, but decided to go to the Cubs when they had in the 90s. Adams looks at a strike, four RBIs today. RBI double in the first. Grounded out, then struck out. RBI triple in the seventh. That came against the lefty, too. Some of this damage now being done by Adams. Piling up against the lefties. There's an 0-2. And you just don't see that many lefties in the minor leagues. So it's kind of rare. You don't get a lot of the bats, but up here there's more left-handers. Stay in that 
line up day in and day out and get more experience at it. We'll just get better and better. A lefty throws a good breaking ball to him, he may get it. But when he doesn't make a good pitch, Adam's a good enough hitter, he's going to make it better. Run given up by Nishek was just his second. And the other came in his second appearance of the year. That's how good he's been. And Dan, <clears throat> there's such a thing uh, of the code of the bullpen. Now, see if you buy into this, but being a team bullpen guy, Nishek had to pitch this game into a, a save situation for Rosenthal. So he'll get a hold, Rosen gets a save. Just the, the code of the bullpen. You believe that now, don't you? Not a word of it. Adams with a fly ball out to center. But I'll work with you and say yes. It's a safe situation. Rosenthal coming on when we come back. Bud Light Line, the perfect beer for whatever happens. And by four, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Wrigley Field, it was nine years ago today, Greg Maddox struck out Omar Vizquel for strikeout number 3,000 of his career. That's something you don't think of. Greg Maddox is having uh, that many strikeouts. We were talking about uh, in the homestand where the anniversary of Bob Gibson. His 3,000 strikeout, and he he was only the second in baseball history to do it when Gibby did it in the 70s. And a base hit into right field for Castro. Castro is now five for 11 off of Rosenthal. Never had not pitched in a week, so. Coming out here to get some work, but he's also trying to pick up his 31st save. Good effort by Colton Wong. Moreno is two for five. Fastball and a strike. 6 3 St. Louis here in the bottom of the ninth. Sets up potentially. Rubber game of the series tomorrow with Adam Wainwright on the mound. Yesterday I gave the hungo to Matt Holiday and guaranteed the win today. Come on, Trevor.
Ground ball could be two. Out at second, wide throw. Did he stay on the bag? He did, and he did. Out at second, out at first. Looked like our first base umpire called safe and then a quick out. Wong nearly off the bag at second base. Somehow stayed on the bag and then turned two. And Adams almost off the bag. And winners is the crew chief. He's the umpire at first base. Wong stays on. Then he fires over here. And he's out. It looked like Mike Winters started to call for a safe and then a real quick out. Gets the play right, the crew chief. Justin Ruggiano will be the final home for Chicago potentially. Fastball and a strike at 98. Rosenthal looks crisp. Yeah, pitch in a week, so he's probably not uh, exactly the best, but he's overly strong. Back to back at 98. Budweiser play of the game, Matt Adams. Four RBIs. Moments away from the post game show, they're on their feet. Cardinals trying to post a victory and at least stay within three of the Milwaukee. The 2 2. Lined out to left, Holiday won't get there. Luciano with a base hit. But he jumps on this pitch down at the bottom of the strike zone, lines it into left field, and now a pinch runner. Alice Wood. Runner. Rosenthal trying to take the lead in the saves department of the National League. Wellington Castillo, the hitter. One for six. That one hit was a home run off of Rosenthal. He's got some credit there swinging. down to their final strike and pitch at 99 from Rosenthal. Very lucky 13th pitch ends the game. on that ball that's upstairs.
The 0-2 again. Goodbye, and the Cardinals win it. Win number 55 for St. Louis, and it sets up the rubber game tomorrow with Wainwright on the mound. Well, I thought Miller pitched very well, his best start in quite a while, and then Brzezinski gives us a little bit of a, a charge. But how about uh, Matt Adams with the four RBIs? The big man does it again. So the final six to three in favor of St. Louis. Two key slides in this game, a stolen base. When it was tied up by Jay, that was in the seventh. Reviewed, Paul stood. Then at the plate, sliding home. Mike Matheny says, nice job. So do we. Post game is next.